And meanwhile, a new survey out shows that more young people are likely to identify as being part of the LGBTQ community than millennials are. Baby boomers or seniors over 70. And today, ABC Action News in-depth reporter Anthony Hill taking a closer look at how society is changing. Being transgender always has its up and downs. Many in the LGBT community will tell you discrimination against them is alive and well. But there's definitely less of it with the increase in LGBT visibility and society becoming more tolerant. I feel very privileged to be able to be as like free as Elliot as I want to be. More people than ever before identify as being somewhere on the LGBT spectrum. But this comes after a long and dark history of systemic discrimination and violence against those communities. There was a huge period of time where it was illegal to be um, a, a man who has sex with men. And it took activists to literally put their lives on the line to fight in order to exist. It was very revolutionary to be public about yourself. And that's what I chose to do. This is Elliot Darrow. At 23 years old, he's a Generation Z trans man. He tells me he realized his true identity when he started college. I lost a few people, and some people had to warm up to the idea, and others were just, oh, you're Elliot now, and that's okay, you're still the same person. Elliot is a part of a generation that is more likely than any other to self-identify as being LGBT. And I think a lot of that has to do with uh, education. A lot of people are able to find the words that describe themselves and before they might not have had those words. According to a new Gallup survey, 5.6% of American adults now identify as LGBT. That's up from 4.5% back in 2017. One of the reasons why we're seeing more people identify as being on the spectrum is because younger generations are more likely than older generations to identify as being something other than heterosexual. You can see here, out of all of the generations since 1946, adults who are part of Generation Z, born between 1997 and 2002, make up the largest share of those who identify as LGBT. I do a significant amount of work with the LGBTQ plus communities. Romel Santiago is a therapist and he says, he believes one of the reasons young people are feeling comfortable with coming out as LGBT is because of societal strides in acceptance and tolerance. I definitely believe that where we're at today is a huge step from where we were 5, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Brumel says because of a history of violence and, in many cases, accepted discrimination against the LGBT community, adults who are now middle-aged and older were forced to stay silent about who they really were. Just that in and of itself is enough to force folks not to feel comfortable, not to take on certain labels, and to, to be forced into essentially the closet. A crucial moment in history was the beginning of LGBT activism in the United States. In the 1950s and 60s, homosexuality was illegal in 49 states, with the exception of Illinois. The Stonewall Inn in New York City was a gay bar. It served as a refuge for many in the LGBT community. But on June 28, 1969, the police raided the bar in order to arrest everyone inside. Fed up with the constant discrimination, they fought back, and it soon turned into a riot with thousands of people. I've been a nonviolent activist for some time, and I've been in many different demonstrations. I've been arrested before. Jay Chetney was there when it all happened, and he said he was beaten by police officers. The anger on uh, this man was just out, right, out of control. And he's still reminded of what happened to him on that early morning. To this day, I have uh, my trouble, trouble with my right knee. Jay says he believes the riots were necessary because People who were LGBT constantly lived in fear and were pushed to the fringes of society. But these riots gave rise to many LGBT activist groups and the very first Pride Parade the following year. Jay says we still have a ways to go in order to achieve full equality, but that we far surpassed any expectation he had. The idea of gay marriage and having an open, open that was just... I, that didn't even occur to me. <laughs> didn't even wasn't even something on my in my playbook. As for Elliot, 
He's just thankful to live in a society that's far more accepting as he takes the baton to continue making our society better for future LGBT generations. I feel really lucky to be in the generation that I'm in because I didn't face as much discrimination and hate. For much of the 1900s, being LGBT was considered a mental illness. In fact, it wasn't until 1973 that the American Psychiatric Association removed homosexuality from its official list of mental disorders. In St. Petersburg, I'm in-depth reporter Anthony Hill, ABC Action News.